When I was at uh, film school, I did a, one of the first things I tried to do was a, a replication of the uh, the abyss worm thing. I remember trying to do that. Very difficult. <laughs> So you went to double negative for eight years? Uh, yeah, just, uh, just, just under nine years, yeah. Nine years. Yeah, so I did double negative for a while. I started my career there in, um, I think it was 2007. I think it was on Hellboy 2 I started in Guillermo del Toro. Because I read you started to study on your own. Yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah, well, I think I was, um, I'm, I'm, I think I was the generation where the industry didn't really exist when I was a kid. Um, and it wasn't. You know, I think it was when the Harry Potters started coming out, especially in the UK, that the industry started to get kind of really big. So it was at that point that college courses started to pop up. Because uh, before that, I was um, I was a builder. I used to do uh, work on roofs and things. So then I went back to uh, university to study for that. My name's uh, John Saru. Uh, I'm one of the lead generalists at uh, ILM. Uh, I work in the ILM a London facility. I've been in the uh, visual effects industry for around 10 years now. I had a weird crossover where within the space of a month I'd worked on a Star Trek movie uh, and a Star Wars movie. Yeah. I think that's pretty much ticked most of the boxes I've got there right there. Yeah, because the, the Star Trek movie uh, was quite impressive in terms of uh, how many ships were rendered you know, this big wave at the end. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. I mean, we were using um, uh, Clarice actually for that, and uh, Clarice is particularly good at uh, handling lots and lots of polygons. It's really quite impressive actually how it rendered that stuff. You saw that movie um, I'm at IMAX, so it was the best way to cool. enjoy it. The way the, the ships are destroyed, you know, the Enterprise, because obviously I've seen all the Star Trek movies with uh, the destruction of the Enterprise in the third movie. Which was yeah. A practical effects. So seeing it. Uh, oh, of course, yes, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. But in yeah. a different fashion, I bet uh, all, the, all the team with you when you were crafting this movie went back to, to watch all the movies where. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's the part of a lot of VFX artists. I mean, a lot of the VFX trade relies on people doing accurate research. So you know you've really got to look at your references because. Essentially, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to match real life to some degree, even if it's kind of fantastical and made up and futuristic. You've still got to try and hit what kind of like you know real materials do, water and, and, and you know metals and stuff like that. So you know some movies you look at kind of realistic photography. Um, with, in, in Rogue One, we looked at a lot of the kind of paintings um, that were done. Uh, you know, previously in the 77 originals, we looked at a lot of the blueprints for the designs. The, the important part of any VFX thing is to make sure that you really look at the reference material you've got and really try and match it, because that's where the detail is. That's, that's what you're trying to do. On Inception, it was quite difficult, I think, because you have to map the whole city and in, imagine yeah. the one there, it's really Well, I mean, Inception was quite because we actually came to France and we just scanned we, so we had LiDAR scans, we scanned all the, all the building facades for the folding sequence and then we basically made like three or four kind of blocks. We'd made sure that the, we'd made it um, in kind of chunks so we could kind of move them around so we'd just get slightly more variation with our modeling so we can make it efficiently model it and then also the nature of the, the cube is you can rotate it four times and get a different view on it as well. So you try and m make it as efficiently as possible. So you get kind of the most, so you can spend most of your time making the models, model detail kind of high res and good, as opposed to trying to make lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So that was one of the, you know, the things on like Inception. And then obviously for texturing, I mean, we just, we had tons of photos. Once again, it's, it's always about hitting that, getting that reference perfect. So we said, you know, our VFX supervisors out there just took lots of photographs of the, of the building. So that was the basis for all the texture as well. Have you seen um, Doctor Strange? I haven't weird enough. I've seen bits of it because uh, obviously we did that, uh, some of, some components of that were done in Ireland, London, um, but I haven't actually seen the movie yet. Doctor Strange reminds me a lot of Inception because of the crazy scenes. And the yeah, there's a few parallels there. From what I've heard, the uh, the Doctor Strange stuff um, is really quite abstract and quite kind of crazy. I haven't, yeah, I keep meaning to see, I've got, I've got two kids now, so oh, yeah. getting a cinema is a lot harder than it used to be. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'd love to see it. So the transition between uh, Double Negative and I Am, how did it happen? Because, yeah, you said that you were to start with and then out of the blue, yeah. Star Wars, it's crazy. I didn't realise how much of a kind of ambition I suppose it's been. I mean, I'm, I was born in 1977, so 
Star Wars is literally the thing I've always watched. If I was ever drawing a robot or, you know, making something out of Lego, Star Wars was in there somewhere in the back of my mind. And, you know, when they opened up a studio in London, it, it felt quite amazing that suddenly there'd been opportunities to work there. We got in touch with each other. Uh, it, felt, it felt good. It felt quite nerve-wracking as well, because it's quite a, you know, it's a place I've always wanted to work. So it was good there, it's good. ILM London did the Jeddah Planet. Yeah. So we did uh, the Occupied City. Um, we did the uh, Source Cave, we did the internals of that as well. We spent a lot, a lot of time doing the destruction stuff for the, uh, the Jeddah Planet as well. It's quite a huge amount of work actually that's, yeah. Huge amount of work, yeah, because the, the Jeddah Planet destruction is mostly uh, large. Yeah, I emailed a bunch of uh, guys who worked on that stuff, and I, some of the effects guys, and I was asking them. And I think apparently on average, the shots were taking up about 30 terabytes of service space each and they had like five, six million particles in them and five hour sim times. I mean, I think that's actually a testament to how good the uh, effects department is at um, ILM because those are actually quite reasonable figures but they still blow my mind every time I hear. If you do remember uh, Mission to Mars, like oh, yeah. the first movie to use that many particles yeah. in the, the face with the, the tornado. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. So when, when I was watching Rogue One, remind me in the new of uh, of Mission to Mars in that extent. There was two kind of particle systems we were using that. We used a, a rigid body simulation for like the main chunks, but then those would spawn huge amounts of particle simulations, um, and those particle simulations are a little quicker and a little more flexible to work with, but whereas rigid bodies are kind of very accurate and give you a kind of very accurate kind of look and they obey, well, if you want them to obey, they obey certain elements of physics as well. So that one was kind of done with the, with the dual system, so it, it ended up being quite a complex setup, but it was a setup that kind of give, gave the artist the most flexibility, and more importantly, it, it gave kind of the, the director and the VFX supervisor the flexibility to tell the story, that, how they wanted to, and to, to reveal elements that we wanted to reveal and that kind of thing. You know, the movie was kind of heavily reshot, uh, heavily um, modified. Since you came at the end of the, uh, the production, you didn't see any of that? So. Well, I mean, I came about halfway through, um, but I don't think any of that stuff was on anything's we're doing. I don't think it was quite a, a big set of reshoots as uh, it was reported. From what I understand, I think it was just a, a few kind of lines of dialogue. So the stuff that we were doing on Jedi was pretty much you know, straightforward, it was pretty much the same kind of thing. I think there was maybe one or two extra shots, bits of dialogue in a different location, so it wasn't anything kind of major. The, the thing that impresses the most of uh, the Jedi planet destruction is this, uh, actually the scale of it. When you see the, the, the Death Star in space and the massive explosion so, yeah. kind of reaching out. To it's a huge, yeah. It's a, yeah, I mean, it's a, I mean it needs to be a massive explosion because it's, you know, it's that, it's the Death Star firing on, is it one reactor, I think it is? Yeah, one reactor, so it's not a full power, uh, but it needs to be a massive explosion, yeah. Yeah, it took us quite a long time to kind of get the, the feeling of that right, especially for the, the wave that kind of comes out from it, yeah. You told me that you're a kid, so you don't quite go to the movies, but what would be the, the movie that struck you most as a VFX artist in the last year or so? Um. I think it might actually be, I watched um, Moana before Christmas and I think, I didn't realise until afterwards, I was speaking to someone last week about the visual effects in Moana and it, none of them ever occurred to me. At no point did I even think about any of the work that was done in, in making the film and I think that's possibly the ultimate accolade a VFX or a computer rendered film can have is that even I as a VFX professional never even thought about it. I was just engaged in the story and the characters and how it was working. So I'd probably say in the recent films I've seen, uh, I think that one would be up there.